Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Doris Mangrum, your host, and this is Education in Our Community. I'm happy to have my co-collaborator, Miss Laura Saul, in the studio with me again today. And today we're going to tackle the topic of how to remain calm in the midst of the chaos. And if you're watching now, you're probably going, well, why do we need to talk about that? I don't know if you do, but I think I do. <laughs> I found myself in the last period of time <laughs> finding myself feeling a little bit out of sorts and there's so many things going on around us and I thought we might have a chat today Miss Laura about how we can put some calm into the midst of the chaos. There are things that are happening around us that are undeniable. There are things that are happening around us that whether we like it or not, we can do something about some of them and some of them we cannot. But there's always, I believe, something that we can do to ground ourselves. And so in the midst of this storm and the chaos, we're going to talk about those things that we can control. And I'm going to start off with the one that I, I think has started to resonate with me with all that I'm going through, and maybe you can tell us some things that you have done as well. I'm finding that when I find myself getting caught up in all that I'm hearing and seeing and folks saying to me, that those times when I'm getting off of my routine and, and getting caught up in it, that I find myself getting back into my routine. Do what you've done. Continue to keep your life working like it always has and not get so caught up in the madness. And that's seems to work. Uh, that's one of the things that I found myself doing and I've got a lot of others but I'd like to hear from you what's something that has worked for you. And I don't know, let me ask you first of all, you may not even feel that way. Do you feel somewhat a little bit out of sorts by things that are happening around us and that you are hearing and seeing and experiencing? To share what your, what your personal experience has been. No. Oh good, <laughs> okay, okay. I don't feel and tell us source. how. Well, when it's storming outside, mm -hmm. I look for the brightest, the loudest colors to put on to lift me up. Okay. When people are going through all kind of changes, mm -hmm. when they, their voice goes up, mm -hmm. when madness is happening mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. them, that's when I come down and I just take a step back. Now, it wasn't always like that. Okay. I can remember the times when the storm was happening inside of me. And what I started doing is working on reprogramming my subconscious mind mm -hmm. so that I could start viewing myself and the things around me in a different light. Mm -hmm. Because we can't do anything about how other people are, but we can do a lot about how we respond to how other people are. Well, I think we can just wrap up the show for right now, <laughs> viewers. You've just heard exactly what needs to be covered in <laughs> one response from Laura Saul. You know, that's actually the show in a nutshell. That what you just said in terms of what you do is literally what we're talking about totally today. I think one of the, and as I was thinking, you know, let's talk about this today. One of the things that came to mind for me is how do we prepare for a real storm? When it's, when, well, okay, when the meteorologist tells us there's rain coming, or I lived in a tornado uh, environment growing up as a child, and, and the good thing about it is, I mean, if you just want to find a good thing about it, is you could see it coming, mm -hmm. and you knew it was coming, and there was preparation that had to be made. So if I marched that along with what you just said, I had to ground myself. I had to you know, find a place that was safe. I had to make myself understand that no matter how bad this tornado is or how large this storm is, 
I find my place of refuge. So when it's all said and done, I'm still going to be here. Mm -hmm. Is that what you just yes. said? Yes, yes. <laughs> and and also on. what happened is I got older. Mm -hmm. I got older. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered as I got older is this too will pass. And so the things that used to make me all anxious and nervous, I discovered after a little while, if I give it time, it's going to pass mm -hmm. and it's going to get better. It always gets better. That's what that thing called faith is. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that it's going to get better and it does. You know, what I'm hearing too, and, and, and I know this, is, and see these, this, this programming for me is about what I already know, but it's just making sure I'm walking in it. We tend to, I tend to, because I've seen you got it all together. I, I can't say that. It, this, for me, sometimes we go back to old stuff, past stuff, and then we look at past stuff and talk about how it's going to impact our future, and we forget to stop at where we are right now and deal with where the present moment is. Mm -hmm. Focusing on what not is bad or what's not positive, but bring it back center like you just shared and all that is good. Mm -hmm. All that, that I'm able to even think about the challenges of the storm is good. Because there's so many who don't even know that there is a storm mm -hmm. or are not aware that there is a way to get out of it. I intellectually know all of these things. I just now start needing to practice it. So. One of the things I would say for folks is to understand the past is there to help you with the present to march into the future, not to go from the past to start talking about in the present what's going to happen in the future, but to understand the relevance and the importance of our day to day. And, and one of the things that you hit that, that I love so much and, and that I've had uh, uh, the fortune of, of knowing you and know that you always are is that you're always calm. You, are all, you always will bring um, calm to chaos. Just today, I, I'll share with our viewers, I got behind an accident, and I'm calling Laura, I may be late, I'm not sure, I'm going to get there. Just be safe, were the words that she said. Just be safe, you'll get here when you get here. Oh, that's right, <laughs> I'll get here when I get here. So it's just having that presence that can change everything. What are some other tips that you can give us, Miss <laughs> Laura, about how you are, are calm in the midst of chaos? Well, I don't allow chaotic people around me. Mm. <laughs> and it's not that I don't love them, mm -hmm. but there may be people who just automatically walk in the room and have something negative mm. to, to say. So what I do, I take a step back. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I'm going to smile while they're going off and I listen, mm -hmm. but I'm going to get as far away from that energy mm -hmm. as I can. Well now, that's something we have in common. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then also I feel really, really blessed. And so I think prayer and focusing on my blessings is something I do on a regular basis. Okay. You know, my loved ones, you know, I have people around me regularly that love me and I love them. And so it could be my children, it could be my honey, it could be... Um, his children and, and my friends and, and extended family. I know without a doubt I have people that love me. Oh, wow. And I celebrate that on a regular basis and they know I love them. Mm -hmm. And so without a doubt. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, my daughter told me one time about a time a teacher gave her a question to answer. And it was some kind of exercise they were doing in this class. And the question was, um, what would you do if your mother said um, she didn't love you? And she said, huh? She said, I don't understand that question. <laughs> and she said, what would you do if your mother didn't love you? And she said, I, I can't even understand that. You know, because my mother would never 
not love me and she would never say she doesn't love me so I can't answer that question because it's not something that fits in our reality mm -hmm. and she knows that because it's true I told her I don't care what you do I may not love what you do, but I will always love you. Oh, wow, that resonates so loudly with me because those are almost the exact same words I said to my children as they were growing. I mean, yeah. we had something we called a contract conversation when they'd done something really off the, the mark uh -huh. that they would always have an open door to come with me to me. But if they wanted to make sure that it was a calm conversation, they said, well, Mom, we need to have a contract conversation. <laughs> So I would gird myself up for something really crazy had happened. But it, it never really was, but it was just always leaving that opportunity and that door open for the communication to create a space of calm, create a place of security. Yes. And, and I think that, that brings us to, to one of the things that I think is also important in remaining calm in the midst of chaos, is understanding that the storm, whatever that may be, the chaos, whatever that may be, it is. Mm -hmm. it, it really is, and, 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 and for people who are hearing you with all the calm and me with a little chaos and, and understanding that the reality is there is a storm, mm -hmm. but the storm is the storm, and you are not the storm. You know, it's just something I think, I'm, uh, uh, biblically speaking, uh, in this world, but not of this world, something like that goes like that. Yes. So we're, we're in the midst of what can be, I guess, identified if Webster was to put a place where the environment, the world is at right now, mm -hmm. stormy, kind of rainy, kind of shiny some days, but more clouds, more um, ominous stuff coming along our ways that we don't know what yeah. it is. But the storm doesn't define how we walk, mm -hmm. what we do, where we go. There's another one that will resonate with you too, With I, I assume it will resonate with you, with children and and it's a, it's a parenting kind of thing that was, that was very popular. I'm not sure it's as popular as it might have been back in the day, was time out. Mm -hmm. Time out was, you know, we were moving away from corporate punishment, corporal punishment, to trying to find more ways of, of rearing our children. And one of the things that the parenting experts used was time out. Well, it might behoove us <laughs> when we're in the midst of our personal storms to take a time out. So tell us about what, you, what your time out looks like, Laura. Or if, you have, if you even have one, okay. Whoa. Now, see, you may not need a timeout because you're you're perfectly Well, actually, calm. I. Wow, that's an excellent question. Okay. My daughter says I don't take as much time out as I should. Okay. For me, a timeout is one. Like I said, removing myself from those stormy environments. Mm -hmm. The other thing is going deep within myself, my mind, and telling myself, you know, there's some humor in all this. Mm. I mean, if we just think about the current situation, you know, in our political environment right now, it is really funny, okay, because I know who's really in charge, okay? And even though these other folks think they are in charge, mm -hmm. they are being revealed one by one, and it's gonna be revealed on a level that some people won't be able to show their face anymore. That's funny to me, because they truly believe they're in charge. I also think about what's the worst that can happen in this situation, mm -hmm. okay? Now, that's not to disregard what has happened with so many people having this travel ban put on people and, and blocking folks from getting back to their family members or forcing people to go back to countries where their lives were in danger. That's different, you know. I don't want to sound like I'm disregarding right. that or, or uh, taking that lightly. That's very seriously, but I never forget who's really in charge, see. God is always very present in my life and in my view of life mm -hmm. and with anything that's happening around. And so my question isn't why? is this happening? 
my question is always, I wonder what God has in store for this situation. Wow. You know, it's so, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I was just trying to keep quiet while you were saying these things because right after, I guess I want to use the word, par I hate using this over and over again, the paradigm shift in our environment occurred. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate to hear a message, a, a spiritual message, and it referred to a passage of scripture that talked about, if you will, that you could pull out from that scripture what's happening today. And from that, that scripture, this, 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 this person of faith was saying, there's a whole lot of shaking going on, but I have said that there will be. I have prepared you for it in the earth realm, in the heavenly realm, and when it's all said and done, I have control of it all. Do not be concerned by what's shaken to your left and to your right and to your north and to your south. And that has began to help me. And I have passed it on because for people who are in chaos more than I'm in chaos, because everywhere I go, that is the topic, mm -hmm. the chaos that we find ourselves in. So I have begun to help people in their chaotic modes to go, this shaking must happen. Mm -hmm. This shaking was to get our attention. This shaking is going to shake out everything that needs to be shaken out. And it had to happen the way it is happening for it to happen the way I want it to be. And so when you put those things into perspective and when you just said, I've got it, he's got it all in control, mm -hmm. then it makes it clear. But in those moments when we get off track, mm -hmm. And so I want to become more, I want to be like Laura when I grow up <laughs> and, and stay on track. I'm getting there. I, I'm getting to the place that I can mm -hmm. find the humor in it. I'm getting to that place where I can laugh at it. And I'm getting to that place of understanding. We say it all the time. Mm -hmm. There's some things we cannot control, but we must control that which we can control. You've spoken of it a couple of times already about perspective. Yeah. Perspective. And getting your eyes off that worse case scenario. Mm -hmm. Well, also, I don't spend all of my time looking and watching everything they're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Great point. Because I know who's in charge. Mm -hmm. Now, to hear about press conferences and to hear <laughs> speeches and to hear all the ugliness, the everything that's going on mm -hmm. in that particular situation, when I see them come on the channel, I turn it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear them, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because I already know what they're going to say. I already know what they're doing, mm -hmm. okay? So I don't want to sit and fill up my energy and my space with all of that that they're about to say. I heard that the press conference recently was 80 minutes or so. In that range. And people actually watch that. Well, you know, I think what we have seen happen in the midst of the chaos is that reality has become kind of dreamlike. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not really the good word to use for it because dream is usually something I like to think of positive nightmares. And, okay, reality has become nightmare. <laughs> that's more the word I should use. Okay. And while people don't like nightmares, it's, it's something that you're almost drawn to. So I like what you just said. And viewers, this again, where we need to listen to Miss Laura in terms of when you see these things coming and you know, you feel it yourself, whatever you're starting to feel internally, turn away or turn away before you even feel it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we pretty much We've got to handle on what's going to be said or yeah. in the realm and whatever we didn't hear, it's going to be wrapped, rewrapped, and rewrapped again. So we will at some point get those pieces that we may have missed by not tuning in. Oh, so yeah. I appreciate oh, these yeah. tips that you have given us in terms Think of... Think about it this way. If you were walking down the street, mm -hmm. okay, and you saw this dog down on the end of the block mm -hmm. and he is drooling out the side and you know <laughs> his mouth and ah, yes. looking really evil yes. and would you continue to walk towards that dog you know i would not oh but people continue to turn on those mm -hmm. nightmares mm -hmm. they continue to spend time talking about mm -hmm. 
what folks are doing, rather than going deep within, finding your own personal peace, and deciding what are you going to do next? Mm -hmm. And how I, it is or not going to impact me. Yes. So if we were to start to look back at some of the things that we can do, I mean, this has been, oh my goodness, I am so happy that we have talked together about this to hear from you. And, and I know as knowing you personally, that you are, that you are not just doing this for the camera, that this is real, this is who you are. You walk in peace. You are you are a calm machine. <laughs> if there was such a thing, you, you, you are that. And so we control what we can control. Mm -hmm. And we definitely control how we receive things. One of the things you said was time management, you know, and, and whether we, when I say time management, around the chaos. Mm -hmm. Th then, you know, um, taking that time out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things we have not talked about is how we can do our physical our physical energy, you know, there's yoga, there's meditation. Are there I don't do enough of that. Okay. <laughs> oh, we found I, something I finally, don't, viewers. Yeah, I don't, I don't okay. do enough. Uh, okay. I'll walk, okay. you know, certain environments, but I don't do enough exercising. But that's a really good way for those who, who can and who do mm -hmm. to really find yourself becoming more and more calm is to exercise and, and to eat better, you know? Things. Yeah, those are, are some basic things to do. But number one, I don't want negativity around me, mm -hmm. okay? And people, the average person works on a job they hate. <laughs> You know that's the truth. Every single day they get up, they go to work. They oh. say, well, I'm going to go get this dollar. That's right. Okay? That's right. And I hate this job, but I got to go. I got to do what I got to do. Now, I'm not saying quit your job, okay? <laughs> I'm not telling anybody to quit their job. What I'm saying is in the midst of that storm, that's when you start making your plan. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you know you're unhappy where you are, that's when you work on your plan. Well, you know, as I'm listening to you and, and you know, you're saying uh, you don't have to get rid of your job, but there are people in your lives, and you, you touched on it earlier, that we need to disengage from. And I have done a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things is to learn how to say no in terms of staying calm. You know, uh, if there's going to be something that people want you to engage in, it's going to be a uh, a barking session, if you will. And while it may be well-intentioned and the outcome may be great, ultimately I feel like it's just going to stir my emotions up. So we have to be careful to walk physically mm -hmm. for the calm. We have to walk mentally, which you have, oh my gosh, hit on so wonderfully. Let's mm -hmm. talk relational in, in terms of you know, we talked about who we connect with, but just in, in, in people who are really close to us. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have to check them or, 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 or when they're in that moment. I think you talked when we first started about, you know, if someone's not quite right that moment, just maybe needing to distance yourself. Mm -hmm. How, what is the process that you use? Because a lot of people struggle with this, you know, particularly if someone's been in their life for a while, and they really like, oh, every time I see them, they got something negative to say, or all they want to talk about is chaos. I know when I see them, oh, here come Doris. I don't want to be bothered. So how do they find a way to disengage without being negative in the disengagement of mm -hmm. someone that they need to, to move mm -hmm. away from? It's a tricky, it's a it's tricky. And it's not easy. No, it's, it's not, not easy. easy. Mm -hmm. This has been a long time coming. And there are only certain people that I will take the time mm -hmm. to just mm -hmm. be quiet and let them mm -hmm. vent, mm -hmm. okay? Because I've reached that place where I don't soak it in. Mm -hmm. I know this is their need to vent and not my need to pick it up and solve it for them, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so in those circumstances, very few, I'll listen 
and then I say, okay, talk to you next time because I know <laughs> they, they need, need it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you've learned the art of listening. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes. And then the other times I just have to say, okay, I'm sorry, I have to, I got another appointment or I have mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. Now, when you've been in a relationship for a period of time, you know whether or not this is somebody that is toxic for you. Mm -hmm. You know whether or not this is a good situation or a bad one. And that's when you need to seek out professional help, seek out somebody that can teach you how to take care of you until you decide what you're going to do, okay? okay? Um, but by all means, you gotta be a, a priority in order to help somebody What's else. What's the old saying? You can't help anybody until you help yourself. Exactly. So that, that's, that's so amazing in terms of, it, 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 all, it all works into our topic today. You know, relational sh sh relationships can ruin a person's life. You know, everything else can be working, but if the relationship is not, when you come from that job that you didn't like in the first place and you're going into a relationship that's maybe more, as you said, toxic, uh, your, your chaos is going to be there. When we talk about the scene, the, mm -hmm. the environment that we find ourselves in, physically, mentally, spiritually, mm -hmm. build up your spirit man. Mm -hmm. And your spirit man, not, uh, you know, I'm not going to say what is your spirit man. Is it faith? Is it skimming rocks? Is it meditating? Whatever your faith reality is, picking petals off of a flower, mm -hmm. whatever that faith connection is to make it more prominent that brings you that calm. That mm -hmm. yoga, that meditation, that time that, that gives you a, a, a moment of peace, we must find it. And turn off the TV, turn off that radio, turn, and see we have so many ways that stuff can come at us now, Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, all of these different ways that things can happen. Cut some of that stuff off and get inside yourself, as you mm -hmm. said. So as we're coming to the end of our time, is there a last word mm -hmm. uh, of peace that you'd like to give to our viewers today? I think it's a daily practice, mm -hmm. deciding that I'm gonna reprogram my subconscious mind every day, just like taking a bath every day. Mm -hmm. It's something that you need to do every single day. And not getting to where you're judgmental about how other people are doing, mm -hmm. but deciding this is what I need to do for myself until it becomes such a part of you that you don't have to think about it anymore. Thank you, because that's one of the things I've been doing. Thank you, Ms. Lorna. <laughs> one of the things I've started doing in the midst of the chaos as I, every morning I have been getting up and said, I am so blessed. I am looking at all around me that is good. I feel good. I am doing positive things. I am helping others. I am being supported. And whatever is happening here is not me. It is the storm. Yes. And so as I'm moving away from it, I am finding each day that I am more calm in the chaos. And Ms. Laura, today you helped me jump leaps and bounds. <laughs> <laughs> and as we're coming to the end of this show, I hope, viewers, that you have jumped leaps and bounds in terms of some things that you will take from the show today, some things that you will incorporate, others that you will add to what you're doing, new things that we've said that you never thought about, or maybe some other things have been keyed up in your mind. But we must find a way, whether it be around what's happening politically, spiritually, physically, mentally, relationally in our lives to find calm in the middle of the chaos. Thank you so much for joining us here at Education in Our Community. Now go out and make this a great day. Do something good for someone else.